Good evening, everyone. Um, Brad, we have everyone uh, that was in the waiting room has now joined the meeting. Okay, I'd like to call the May 27th special uh, 2021 special select board meeting to order. Um, additions or changes to the agenda, Dana? Uh, Dana, sorry, uh, Vince? I know I'm new, but um, <laughs> no, there are none. Okay, uh, public comment. Hearing none, um, Good Samaritan approval and signature discussion. Rick, you want to lead it off? Yeah, sure thing. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to jump in too soon. Thanks. Um, well, we really appreciate your willingness to meet again so, so soon on, on short notice. Um, I have to explain that we learned on Tuesday uh, from the Department of Families and Children that the certification of local government approval, that form that we asked you to, to, to make a decision on, can actually only be act, acted on when we have um, obtained all necessary permits that you require. So in fact, you can't act on that yet. Uh, we just submitted our uh, DRB permit uh, last week. Um, but uh, certainly we're glad to um, continue the discussion about services. It's, it's, uh, it's important to do that and we're ready to do that. I can hear it. Excuse me. So, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll just launch it off by saying uh, we could do one of two things. One, uh, I could hit, a, hit some highlights, point out some highlights from our letter that we sent to you about this issue or I could respond to your questions. Um, just let me know what would be better for you. Well, why don't you take and kind of recap what you did before. Um, one of the troubles is, is that uh, we have a bunch of other people here that haven't, that weren't here for the uh, original discussion. And it's like, I like to have it all, the background filled in. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, okay, well, let me introduce our team first then. Uh, uh, I'm Rick DeAngelis, and I'm the executive director of the Good Samaritan Haven. And uh, we are working in partnership with uh, Downstreet uh, Housing and Community Development. Um, uh, Julie and Nicola, would you introduce yourselves, please? Sure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for having um, us here and having the meeting this evening. I'm Julie Curtin. I'm the interim CEO and COO at Downstreet. And I'm Nicola Anderson. I'm the Associate Director of Real Estate Development, and I've been the project manager for this project. Yeah, and uh, sure, I don't know why you're not on there. Uh, Downstreet is our real estate development partner. And uh, what we're hoping to do is to purchase the Twin City uh, Motel uh, on Route 302 and develop what we're calling a service enriched emergency housing center or hub. And um, in our plan, uh, there would be uh, 18 rooms uh, that could house up to a total of 35 individuals. And uh, in addition to that, uh, we're intending to um, use the house that's on that site as the center of our uh, service and administrative operations. So it would be intensively staffed 24-7. Uh, that was crazy every so often. Um, so uh, just a few points about that. You know, we have been providing emergency housing and services for 35 years. And unfortunately, this problem of homelessness in our region uh, continues to, to grow and grow. And it culminated during the pandemic. And now uh, we have, a, uh, I guess, a concentration of people who are homeless that are living in, in motels. And um, you know, our goal is to get away from the motel voucher system. It doesn't work. Uh, you've experienced that at the Hilltop Inn. Um, and that's been the case in other motels as well. It's not just at the Hilltop Inn. And the reason for that is that, and what's going to be different about where, what we're proposing is um, 
you know, we're going to be screening everyone that goes uh, into in, into into what we're proposing. Uh, in other words, we'll make choices about what's the best fit for for different individuals. And Twin City isn't the only uh, site that um, we're trying to put into operation this year. Uh, we could we will be operating sites in three other communities. Uh, Barry City, Montpelier, and Barry Town. So number one, uh, we're going to be making a selection that's the right fit for it for each site. Uh, secondly, uh, the way that we're going to run Twin City is it's a program. People are there because uh, they've made a choice to participate in our program. They're not there by right. Um, and if they don't agree or abide by our rules, they won't be able to, to stay. Uh, somebody raised the question to me, well, what happens if you find drug or alcohol uh, in, in someone's uh, room? Uh, number one, I would say we're asking each person to pledge that they will not use drug or alcohol in the premises. Uh, secondly, we know these folks pretty well. So we have, we have a, pretty, a pretty good idea of who, has, who, has, who may have a special difficulty uh, with drug and alcohol use. Uh, thirdly, uh, we're going to do daily health and wellness checks in which we will uh, check in with each individual and uh, enter into their room. Uh, and fourthly, if we know that somebody is breaking the rule and using drug or alcohol in their room, they, they run the risk of losing their, their room immediately. And I can imagine a situation where we give somebody a second chance. Let's say their behavior hasn't been out of line, but they did have alcohol in their room. I could see giving somebody another chance on that, but we're gonna be pretty strict about that rule. Uh, uh, and I guess the other difference with the Hilltop Inn and the other motels is that, um, you know, we, we can end their residency at the Hilltop Inn immediately. And, uh, and we will do that. We do that in our other facilities. Our number one goal is the, the safety of our staff and the people who are at, at the facility. So um, you know, I, I guess that the other thing that I would point out about what's gonna happen, uh, uh, what we're proposing is that we're working very, very closely with a number of other service providers at our last meeting, uh, Sue Minter of Capstone and Mary Moulton of Washington County Mental Health Services spoke, uh, and they are partners that um, are gonna uh, be on site with us as needed and, uh, and help us make sure that this works correctly. Uh, an another question that um, uh, has come up and uh, we addressed it at our last meeting uh, it's our intent to pay uh, the full uh, taxes, property taxes on the property. It's in our budget. Uh, we're requesting funds to do that. Uh, we understand that there's going to be some impact on your services, and, and we intend to pay our fair share of that. Just out of curiosity here, uh, how are the numbers going to line up? If, if you're taking in, uh, I believe it's 16 people at uh, Twin City? Uh, it's 18 rooms. 18. And how many people are housed at, uh, at uh, Hilltop? Uh, well, there's 90 rooms at the Hilltop, about 90 rooms. And um, not all of the people in there have a uh, motel voucher. Um, so let's say uh, there are 75 right now that have a, a motel voucher. S some of them will be leaving as of July 1st uh, because they're changing the eligibility requirements for the motel voucher program. So, so maybe about a third of, of those uh, will have to leave by July 1st. Uh, the remaining folks are going to have an additional period of time uh, until uh, October. And um, so it's going to be a gradual uh, tightening up of the eligibility requirements for that program. So the demand is there, then, is what you're saying for your services? 
but the, oh, the demand is definitely there. And um, but I, I think altogether, uh, well, I don't think um, together with the other three facilities that we're intending to operate this year, we'll have 83 beds available. But there, if the hotel voucher, voucher system's coming to an end, you've got uh, Econo Lodge and a few others that are going to be basically cutting people loose. Well, we, we can't address all the need. It, um, we, do the best, we, we do the best we can, but uh, you know, yeah. we're a small organization really. And, um, but um, we think it can make a real difference. Um, and, I, and I think the other thing to say about it is, if you can under, you know, try to appreciate this, the, the facility that we're proposing at Twin City and our other facilities, they're going to be treating people with decency and respect, give them a little bit of privacy, give them the support services they need. So it's a different way of doing business. And we think in the long run, it's going to pay off. OK. Any questions for Rick? Rick, yeah, my name is Dave Sawyer on the select board in town. Um, out of the out of the 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 ones that are up there now using the hotel voucher system, what percentage do you feel that are gonna be able to comply and fall within your program? Because uh, you know there are substance abuse problems, and some of them aren't willing to change. I mean, do you have some kind of idea on a percentage of of the homeless that will fall within your program and not be back out in tent cities or, you know, uh, being somewhere in the community? Uh, great, great question, Dave. Um, you know, our experience at the Hilltop, we worked at both of the, the O'Connell Lodge and the Hilltop. And our experience is, was that most people who were there under the motel voucher system, they appreciate the fact that they have a voucher and they play by the rules. It uh, tends to be a few troublemakers um, and people that have difficulty with their behavior or they have a substance abuse or mental health problem. So I would just begin by, by that. Um, the second thing is we are right now, our staff is meeting with people who are getting their notices and we're trying to make a determination about where the best fit is. And it's true that the best fit for some people is unfortunately a tent and we are distributing tents to some people. Um, so there's gonna be a weaning process and um, and we're hoping that we can accommodate the needs in one way or another. And like I say, for some people that could be outside. Now, the the individuals outside, will they be able to come use the, I mean, are there gonna be any facilities that they're gonna be able to use? Showers, warm restrooms, something like that at your your facility? For most people we have, we have allowed that. I mean, there are some people that we have on a do not admit list because they've been dangerous. But uh, at, at our shelter in Barry, or I suppose at Twin City, we could make available just day facilities like washing machines, showers, stuff like that. So that's not in your program as it is structured at this point. It's we do allow that in Barry at the Haven. Uh, people do just come in and we, you know, we allow them to use the bathrooms or laundry or showers. Okay. Thank you for being here tonight, Rick. This is Flo Smith, and you've answered some of the questions that I had in terms of how you would address if there were issues or if you found there was substance or alcohol abuse after someone committed that they would not use. Um, so that's good. And I was going to ask about the taxes, but you addressed that as well. Those were my only questions at this point. I may have more as we go forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave. Thank you, Bradley. Um, good sanguinity. I'm a Berlin resident. Um, I've also for, oh God, a decade now uh, helped out with one of the community breakfasts in um, area at the Unitarian Universalist Church. Um, 
every Friday and now every Tuesday morning, we provide breakfast to anybody that walks through the door. So a lot of the folks that we saw in, in very pre-pandemic and probably post-pandemic um, were folks that uh, had been at the Haven or um, the night before and were, were looking for breakfast in the morning. And there's a number of churches in Barrie that are doing uh, similar services. Um, so my two cents in this is We've worked hand in hand with the Good Sam for years. Um, we financially support the Good Sam, and we very much encourage the Select Board to ask lots of questions, but also um, to support this as well, because I think this is these are good services that we can provide. And I'm, if anybody is going to run it right in this world, I, I put my faith in the folks at the Good Sam. So that's my piece. Yeah. Thank you, David. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Hello, um, I'm not a Berlin resident, um, but I'm uh, the chair of the Homelessness Task Force in Montpelier. My name's Ken Russell. And um, I just wanna uh, basically affirm what David just said. Um, there are a lot of agitation and concern about the homeless situation, um, a lot of criticisms and worries, but uh, Rick and Good Sam are folks that really get it done, uh, run a good business, have good relationships with people in the community and with the homeless folks themselves. And, um, and it, it's, it's hard work and, and, and we are truly blessed to have such good, such competence at problem solving in this area, one that causes a lot of problems. So kudos to this and, and, you know, I, I think if you, if you choose to go forward with this in, in Berlin, I think you'll be very pleased with how well managed it is in a sense of, you know, really having a cohesive, you know, strong community. So that's just put my support behind this. And Thank then, you, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to say, just because, you know, I am representing my failure is, oh, sorry. It's, it's just, it, it is, it's a regional problem. Oh. So, yeah. That's it. Okay, thank you. But you're, the, Brad, I don't know if it's you or my computer is breaking up. Brad, Susan, Susan Ritu has a question. She has her hand up. Hi, I don't have a question. Sure, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a question. I am a Berlin resident and I am in support of the shelter. Uh, 100%, no one should go without a home. And furthermore, I'm here in support of my colleagues at Vermont Center for Independent Living. I know the entire organization and the board members are in support of having this service available. That's all I wanted to say. Thank, well, thank you, you very Susan. Much. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to make my comment. Mm. <clears throat> Brad, Mr. Chenette has yeah. raised his hand. Hi, hi folks. Um, Bernie? Yes, Ber Bernie Chenette. Um, I uh, have the advantage of having served with uh, Good Sam uh, for about 20 years as a volunteer. And uh, uh, eventually I got on the uh, executive uh, board uh, of directors and uh, became the president of that when, before I left. Um, and I interacted with Rick DeAngelis uh, towards the end of that stint. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I was very impressed with him then and I am certainly impressed with him now uh, to bring this uh, project forward. I, I urge the board to uh, seriously consider it and I definitely support it. Um, I'm in the Partridge Farm neighborhood, which is our, the closest neighborhood to the Twin City project. Um, I think I've heard a couple of comments or questions from folks in our neighborhood wondering if uh, safety could be of a concern given the commercial nature of the traffic on 302. Um, you know, people wanting to cross the road, for instance, to get to CVS, uh, pharmacy, that kind of thing. I don't know if that was addressed uh, in the last uh, board meeting, but um, other than that, I think, uh, although there may be mixed feelings in, in our neighborhood, um, you know, this is a well-run organization, and I think that bodes well for the success of it. And I would urge the town to uh, to support it. Thank you. Okay, th thank you. Any thank you. other questions, comments? 
Any other questions or comments? Go raise your hand. Hi, uh, this is this is Rob Lamert. I'm a resident of Partridge Farms as well as I'm Bernie's neighbor. Um, and I want to echo um, what was said about Route 302. Um, and there needs to be some provision for folks to cross the road because that's where the majority of the services are. And that's not a place to jaywalk. Um, so I think we, we need to plan on, on uh, some type of crossing there. It's, I think it's important. Other than that, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a, we, we, uh, both my wife and I support it. Okay. Um, uh, Vince, we'll have to take and see what the state says about a, a, a signal there, because that is a state highway. Yes. Yeah, just to let you all know, we have been working with VTrans through this. That is a state highway, so we don't have control over adding a crosswalk. But we are, uh, we have been talking with Green Mountain Transit about adding a bus stop on the site. To, and that will help, you know, shuttle residents to Barry, Berlin, Town Center, and Montpelier into different services as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And any more questions, comments? Hearing none, um, we'll take in, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their contributions and we'll move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, which is uh, VTRANS grant agreement application for the Fisher Road project. Yeah, that is, Brad, that, this is Vince. Um, yeah. <clears throat> that's just a requirement <clears throat> that VTRANS has asked for. It's a document that basically uh, was in the package that I provided um, saying that we agree to the requirements and obligation of the, of the grant program, um, including a commitment to match funds. Uh, it gives me also the, as the town administrator, to serve as the authorizing official for the, the GEARS application. Um, to put it into gears and to uh, overall ad have administrative responsibility uh, for the grant application and any provisions thereafter. Okay. That is the purpose of that. Um, just a note on that as well. It, there is a 20% uh, match requirement and we are in conversation <clears throat> with both the mall and the hospital uh, to contribute to that uh, that percentage of grant and it we don't have confirmation yet but it looks like they're both at least considering it and haven't said no uh, I'll, I'll go with that at this point <laughs> okay anything else on this that's it from me hearing then we'll move on to round table hello nothing from me tonight but thank you and i was just going to ask vince do we have a time period when they may give their decision in terms of what we were just discussing? Uh, they have to do it very soon because the reason it's on this agenda tonight is the application is due on the 4th. Mm -hmm. So you should 4th. have their determination soon then? Yes, I, I hope by, I, 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 again, I hope by Wednesday. Excellent, thank you, Vince. You're welcome. Dave? No, I don't have anything at this point, nope. Uh, I have a few things to say. <laughs> uh, Vince, most of this is uh, just uh, information. Um, how are you coming with the uh, Lover's Lane Bridge? Lover's Lane Bridge. Great question, Brad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite topics. Um, it, it's actually, it, it's both good and bad. Uh, again, we, we're, we're going to get the funds from the state. It's just a question of when. Um, the latest information now is I have to complete the uh, request um, for the next fiscal year, which comes out, as we all know, um, probably the earliest I'll be able to do that when they open that up will be August. Um, then it'll go through the approval process. So nothing will be able to happen again this year. It'll be. In, and what in, about the uh, Fisher Road culvert? How's that coming? Fisher Road culvert is, um, that's moving forward. We have the, uh, 
easement agreement with um, the Legu Inc. Uh, so uh, that's that's progressing forward. Okay, very good. Uh, I take it there's no executive session. That's correct. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. You're, you're muted, I make, Flo. <laughs> I make the motion to adjourn the meeting. And I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Thank carries. You, Thank you, Vince. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a good evening. So, thank you.